everybody! It's 6B Games and Elk here, and welcome to a sort of Season 1 finale for Fire Emblem Builder. Uh, this is kind of like a big, big, big video that I have here for you all today. Today, we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you how to make a all-in-one chapter, or like it's a one uh, all-in-one video. Today, we're going to cover how to make an entire chapter uh, from scratch. So I'll take you on the journey of just making a bunch of stuff, getting stuff in preparation, stuff in order. It's sort of an all-in-one video where I teach you how certain stuff works, uh, where we go over every single little thing. So this is basically the all-in-one version video. Uh, you'll see what I mean when time goes on. I'll just make a chapter that I think is fun and that a lot of people want to play. And uh, I shouldn't overscope because I uh, was already uh, doing that almost. But for now, we're just going to cover uh, a little bit of everything. So, yeah, why don't we get started? Um, a lot of you voted for this, by the way. We've had a huge poll with like um, 70 votes in total, which is a new record. And a lot of you actually voted for an all-in-one video. So, yeah, let's just dive into that immediately. First thing I want to do is because... Uh, we'll be doing chapter one Escape we'll be transforming that into a new chapter. Let me quickly grab a certain patch for something cool We're going to be looking for a patch called chapter titles To text and there's multiple versions of this uh, Which yeah, I'm, I'm just uh, I'm gonna drag it over here right here. This is the one you want to have uh, Let's just install this particular one um, Yeah, now all of the chapter titles in the game are being converted to text so if I close this and Go to the chapter editor right here. You can pretty easily see that if we just type the map name here, what should we call it? Uh, 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 let's just call this chapter Embers of a Prophecy. That sounds that sounds pretty Fire Emblem the Prophecy of Flames related. Because I was thinking uh, we'll do a Fire Emblem the Prophecy of Flames style kind of uh, ROM hack. Uh, I thought that could be a fun idea to try out. So um, what I'll do is I don't have a map yet. I'll probably start off with that. And after the map is done, we'll start making... Uh, and filling in the rest of the uh, rest of the like uh, ROM hacks, rest of the chapter. So uh, that's gonna be fun for now. Though what I do want to do is I want the chapter things to be fate and map. Okay, that's cool. I want a uh, seize castle gate. I want a seize chapter. Uh, we could. Perhaps just change around the aesthetic of the map. Let's see. Uh, do, which which do we think is cool? There's literally no difference between these two, or with uh, between these two. There's literally no difference. So that's that's interesting. We could go. What the hell happened? Oh, this is a remnant of the old tutorial. Uh, all of the tile sets are completely uh, bugged. Out. Are they bugged? Out? I don't know. Um, we still have the snow map tile set, but I don't want to really make a snow map. Let's see. This one, ah, uh, not really. We are, I'm not going to make a desert chapter. That's tedious. Um, I might just stick with a standard, uh, with, I'm going to stick with this particular, uh, map palette. We'll make a, a map out of this. Uh, we'll resize it. Let's say we'll make it a. We'll increase the size by this amount. I think that's okay. And what I like to do when making a new map is just select these tiles, uh, scramble them all over the place, uh, so that we can start the uh, the whole process anew. So that we don't focus on which tiles are there. That we don't recycle anything. Uh, what I also want to take a look at is the characters, because I have added a couple of characters to the game uh, already that we can go and uh, distribute over the entire uh, map. 
We have a bunch of characters. We have uh, Tim, who has a different portrait. This one was made by a Sir Knight a while ago. I thought, why not use this particular one in this video? Uh, I thought, why not use this particular one in this video? Uh, I don't know why this description still matches that of Erika. Let me uh, fix that real quick. I actually have the Prophecy of Flames open for this, so... That's really handy. Okay, be gone. Actual good ROM hack. Uh, let's change this up. Right, so there you go. Uh, now that's, that's successful. We have uh, Sir Land in the hack. I should probably turn... Oh wait, he has everything set. Uh, we have uh, Emma here. We have Jared. We have Kirina. Uh, we have... This is not Tana. That's that's misinformation. We have Linda. Uh, I'll walk through the character progress or the character process again. Because uh, we still need a boss for this chapter. We need a boss to replace Brigitte. So we will probably... Uh, uh, yeah, we'll walk through how to import a character again as well, how to set that up. But we also have Simon, uh, who's also known as Greeny. This is a new character that probably a lot of you haven't seen before. That is because uh, he's uh, a very late game character in the Prophecy of Flames. He did get a massive glow up though. And we have Michael, who's actually going to be playable in this hack. So that's going to be fun. Uh, and yeah, we need a boss. But I first wanted to start off with like making a map. And there's just a bunch of stuff that we still need to import anyway. Uh, I just did a little bit of preparations, but the rest will all be covered in this video. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to start making a chapter from scratch. So let's just, uh, what I'll do, let's just do that, I want to say. But what I'm going to do is we have the map here. I'll go and uh, uh, zoom in a little. I'll play a little music, play a little song, whilst the rest of you uh, just... Yeah, enjoy uh, a little bit of music uh, whilst I start and uh, make a map in the meantime uh, so that you can see a time lapse of how I make maps and then we'll discuss stuff like tile changes a little bit after that. It's gonna be fun. Uh, so yeah, time to dive into map making. See you all after the time lapse is done.
Alrighty, so that is that. Uh, we actually have the map right here. Uh, I Oh, I still see a couple of things. You see, that's the thing with the map. I'm not always satisfied, even after I quit. Um, I sort of, yeah, did my best to sort of paint a picture. Um, uh, there were still some little things that I, uh, edited. Like, for an example, down here, you can see that the river, I changed a little bit of the river there. Um, but basically, my, uh, what I'm doing when I make a map, and that was probably very visible as well, in this particular section, this particular uh, way I made the map in the footage, is that what I like to do is I first like to, when it's especially when it's a siege chapter or just most chapters in general, if there's like a throne or a castle or something like that involved, I like to place the most important objects on the map first. So for an example, right now I place the castle as the first thing, then I started building the mountains around it. Uh, that was what I did first. Then I was thinking, okay, I wanted like a fortress on the map, so I put that down here, together with a armory and a vendor, or a shop. I put those down there, uh, and then I start thinking, what else do I want on the map? So I thought of a village, which I had uh, eventually moved, because I had a different idea for the map. And then we also have, at a certain point, I was like, huh, let's put a village in the top, because I have nothing else to really do or something else I could think of with the village. Like, let's actually do that. That it looks like a mountain is starting there. So, yeah, that's kind of the 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 deal. That's kind of the thing I uh, do when I make a map. I first start thinking, where do I place certain map objects? And then, whilst uh, when I've made some map objects, I go like, okay, do I need stuff like a river in there? So then I put like I started making a river. Uh, and later on, I also started adding stuff like fortresses and forests. Uh, the way I usually add fortresses and forests to my map is... I tend to be a big fan of adding some fortresses and forests to my map, because... Otherwise, the map will look a little bit empty, because you have to imagine that the rest is just grass, and I think that looks a little ugly. So that's why I add uh, forest patches every uh, at certain spots. It can look really pretty, especially like here, it still looks kind of pretty, and there's some spots here and there with some um, forests and such. Uh, I don't know about this specific set of trees though, you could always remove those, but then like my brain goes like, this is a very empty square. Uh, my brain likes to avoid that, it also kind of depends on what map you're making. If you're making a more planes-like map, you know, a sake kind of deal, then you would probably have less trees. Uh, I'm very happy with the result though. Uh, what I also realized is that maybe my rivers were a little too static or were a little too straight, because uh, rivers, especially back in the day, were allowed to meander a lot, so they were allowed to go in all kinds of different directions. So, that is kind of the reason why I decided to change and shuffle up the, uh, yeah, the, the, the rivers a little. Uh, I really like the shape of the mountains as well. Uh, it does the mountains don't look like they're very straight anymore, they look just as meandering as the river. Which I think is very neat looking. Uh, and as you can see, like, the castle fits very neatly into the mountain, uh, area mainly because I added some extra uh, trees and hills and stuff around the castle itself that's a good way to blend the normal grass or plains with mountains just put a bunch of forests and thickets and little peaks mountains near it and that is also a way uh, in which you can design your uh, your map because if you take a look at the uh, like the edges of the little, you can see these as little platforms I've made. If you take a look at the edges of certain platforms, you can, for an example, see that uh, I added some trees and some hills and stuff to the edges of certain sections to make it like look a little nicer, uh, and that way they're not immediate uh, in the uh, immediate path, in the direct path from uh, where you want to go. Uh, I also made the uh, river a little bigger here. You could call this a lake. Uh, I just added a bunch of extra water to make it look a little more natural. Um, 
those are some little tips and tricks on how you do a map. I know I've made a tutorial on it before, but that's another way you can do that. So that is how I make the map. Uh, usually I make the map without the gameplay design in mind, and you can always alter the map if you want to utilize some different gameplay defining tricks here and there. But what I did think about uh, for this map specifically is where am I going to place the villages? I don't want to place them out of the way so that the player has to walk around the entire map. Let's say if a village was... Well, we, what would be a bad place for a village? I guess in the bottom right, the castle's right here. There's a direct path to the castle going here. You take, you go up, you can go to the castle. It's a very straightforward path. If I place the village not near that path at all, but like in the bottom here or out of the way, that would mean that the player would go there and they would literally not have a single reason to approach that village. It would just kill the player's time. You would send a unit there that wouldn't get to participate in the rest of the action. Whilst here, the villages are kind of in a position that you needed to go to anyways. So that your units are close to the castle, somewhat relatively close to the castle. They can catch up in one or two turns. So... That is something I always keep in mind. Do I put the objectives near the final objective where you want your units to go to, which in this case is the castle? And another thing I focused on is, do I want choke points? Uh, and where do I put the choke points? Uh, the bridges are very obvious choke points. You can very uh, much use those. This fortress right here may seem a little pointless, but that is because I thought, huh, this could just be an enemy reinforcement fortress. I could put a uh, fortress in the mountains so that there's enemy reinforcements coming from there. Uh, that's also something cool you can do to just give your uh, player a disadvantage. And there's just all kinds of little tricks you can utilize to sort of come to making a map. Uh, which includes thinking of map objectives before you actually start. Uh, or think before of map objectives before you start making stuff and whilst you're doing it. Shuffling up things is a little nicer uh, than just diving straight into things. And another thing I kind of wanted to note is uh, this is a little bit of a perfectionist thing, but if you ever notice that parts of your map or uh, objects on your map that aren't like villages or houses or fortresses, because those are very square, everything man-made is very square. If there's anything that's not man-made, on your map, uh, if there's anything that's man, not man-made on your map and it's very square looking, then you could try to touch it up a little, smoothen it up a little, so that maybe it looks a little bit more natural. Like I'm seeing right here, this could technically be a little more round, if you catch my drift there. I could have uh, rounded up that a little bit, but you know, that's just little things. I think this looks pretty good for a map. It also just takes a lot of practice, so don't really be afraid to uh, uh, to practice with stuff like this. Um, and I haven't even done that much complex stuff. I mean, I don't really do waterfalls. You can try to fumble about with that. Point is, this is how I made this map. I wanted to show you guys how I do it. I wanted to give you guys a little more tips on that. So uh, we got the map, now let's click this. Uh, we'll get to the tile changes later. For now, let's actually first insert the boss character that we want to uh, uh, have the take the throne. I'll probably take one of the Parofsi of Flames characters. So, yeah, it's gonna be fun. Let's add a boss. All right. So since this chapter's boss, chapter one's boss, forget. Let's actually see if we can uh, replace this character. Uh, let me first import a portrait. Um, that, uh, let me first import a portrait of a boss that we could, uh, could use in this chapter. I'm taking a look at if there's a, a fun uh, boss from Fire Emblem the Prophecy of Flames here. Or if there's, like, a portrait of a character that we, uh, that I still haven't used. Uh, we could, actually, this might just be the most fun to do. Let's, uh, give Igor another shot. If you remember who he is, uh... This is Igor, for those of you who do not know who Igor is. Uh, Igor is a uh, 
is the boss of Chapter 5X in Fire Emblem the Prophecy of Flames. He's a very funny dude. I have had a lot of fun writing this character. So, right now, this is his boss uh, sort of status. I don't remember what actually is his... Uh, what is his... Uh, this is his description. He has an ice affinity. Uh, technically speaking, we could just actually copy and just paste that here. We can always tweak stats later. Uh, whenever you do this, make sure, by the way, that the ID matches with everything. Uh, let's go all the way down. Wait a second. Where is the name? Where did the name go? This is interesting. Um, Bone has 23A, so it's 223 22F. That's mirror. This is where it gets. Okay, that's that's good enough. We're just basing the thing off bone. So 294. Yeah, that's that's uh Brigette's description, alright. Uh, let's just copy the description from uh, from the Prophecy of Flames as well. That makes uh, our life a lot easier. So, if correct, it should show up. Yeah, there we go. And the portrait is uh, this one. Perfect. So, he now has all of the stats that he needs. Uh, since we imported the data from Fire Emblem the Prophecy of Flames, he has the boss... Uh, I can set or like the boss icon will appear he has a cavalry unit icon uh, he has Kanto uh, mounted aid calculation so yeah he's doing uh, fine right here he has a uh, he has all the uh, information he needs uh, we don't really need to edit growth rates uh, we might have to actually let's just import a unit palette form so let me first import the palette uh, off screen. Let's see. It should be here. There you go. Uh, and now it looks a little bit scuffed. Uh, because if you remember from the palette tutorial, it looks a little scuffed sometimes. Uh, because I haven't set the correct class yet. You can do that here. Uh, the only thing we need to actually change is just the the class here. That's that. If we needed more promoted uh, class palettes, we could do that here. But we don't. So, perfect. Uh, the Igor actually has his palette now, and even though the uh, palette name is still Bre, because of Bruguette, uh the name here... Oh, I didn't change the name yet. Well, that's fixed now. Now this guy is called Igor. Perfect. So, this man's now called Igor. Uh, we have done that. Uh, that is Igor done for now. Let's actually take a look at... Two more things I actually want to kind of import. Uh, well, not import. First, let's take a look at uh, this dummy right here. Because the Manikari is standard in the game. Let's rename it to... Is there... Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. I could just reuse some of the text here. Um... Sorry about that little romance conversation of being gone from this version of the ROM, but let's just use the uh, the Manikadi here. This is just a little recap on how to do items. We have the Manikadi here. Uh, the description we can actually change to... Uh, what's the rapier description? 4-0-C. So now the Manikadi should work. The only exception being that this weapon is fully functional normally with only one issue and that is that it has... It doesn't have the lin lock on it. Oh wait, it does. Uh, so for the lin lock, we just go over to the character editor and we're going to give the lin lock to... Where's the lin lock? Here it is. We're giving the lin lock to Emma because Emma in the normal game also uses that weapon. Or she also uses that lock. And then, what we want to do is, I kind of want to import the uh, Miner Sword from 
the Fire Emblem the Prophecy of Flames, which is an item you haven't seen before. It's a little, uh, it's hidden. So what we'll do is I'll also walk through how to add, add, or add a new item. What is this hex sword? Oh, I think we just made that, uh, like back in the day, a broken weapon. I forgot that I made this. That's kind of funny. Uh, we're just going to get a new set of text here. Um, let's just say 3, 4, 19. There you go. And we'll say that this is the minor sword. And we'll call this one uh, effective against promoted units. Oh wait, we don't actually need to have the sentence end with a dot. Uh, when it comes to descriptions, that barely happens. Does it? Oh, it does though. Okay, that's so stupid, but who cares? Um, D5 <clears throat> 2, I think? Oh, that's more conversations. Let's open this up, fix that. I'm very, very, very precise. I want to do everything correctly. So, this is us walking through creating an item once again. A D4F. No. I suck with hexadecimal numbers. <clears throat> right. So, what you want to do uh, is let's make it a D sword, sure, why not? I don't actually know. Wait, actually, we can just go to Fire Emblem the Prophecy of Flames like this, and we just go to the item editor. Nice little sneak peek, by the way, guys. Uh, this is the minor sword. We copy this, and we paste that here. That way, all of the stats uh, are carried over. Wait a sec. Where is the other ah, go. Uh, make sure to set this. And uh, this is D49. Uh, no, it's D59. D59. Yeah. And there's no use screen. Why is there? Right. So, <clears throat> that is that. It's a very powerful sword. Holy damn. Does it really weigh 12? Did I give it 12 weight in the original ROM? No, this can't be right. I didn't give it these stats. It's a lie. This is the wrong sword. Yeah, this is the wrong sword. There should be another one somewhere. Where is the other minor sword? There it is. Uh, this is the correct one. So it has 25 uses. I was about to say, because that would be stupidly, stupidly broken, and not in a good way. I said 95, that's a little too accurate. Uh, 5 weights, 10 crit. Uh, it's a level E sword, which I'm fine with. Uh, this is 120. So, there isn't really any other stat boosts. It is not unbreakable and unsellable, that would be way too broken. Um, did I? Yeah, we gave it two weapon experience per hit to like double the amount of uh, effect or like double the amount of weapon experience you got. Now though, uh, we need to set effectiveness. Yeah, allocate new effectiveness. And then this window opens up that allows us to set the effectiveness. So we're going for all the pre-promoted characters or pre-promoted classes in the game. Which in this ROM aren't as many as in the original Fire Emblem the Prophecy of Flames ROM. We're going over how you set effectivenesses once again, by the way, guys. Uh, this is how you do that. You just simply make a little list of classes that your weapon is effective against. So let's set the generals here. Uh, and we also have to set a weapon icon in a minute. It's a mannequin. That's not a promoted class. Hero, make sure to include that. Let's see, 14 is Myrmidon, 15 Swordmaster. The reason that weapon exists is because normally Simon, uh, I'm planning on having Simon join as a late game unit, 
where Simon joins like very late in the game and giving him the minor sword gives him the ability to like catch up in terms of levels and weapon experience quickly because normally that really doesn't happen that much or that's it's really tricky to train an est unit I feel like sometimes in the harder games like Nino at least has ranged attacks and then on the other hand you have uh, for an example uh, you have characters such as Est and also Simon in this case who don't really have ranged attacks at their disposal well you could give him a javelin but I doubt he'll do a lot of damage with that so you're kind of stuck with having a unit that doesn't deal too much damage so I thought giving him a bonus damage weapon would be good you could always take it off him and completely obliterate other uh, enemies with this because it's a pretty powerful weapon and it's not locked to him but I feel like that's just you know a thing that m might just cause a little uh, a bit of excitement in the late game that was my thought process behind that so uh, this is a druid this is uh, then we get to th the 30 actually yeah redemption arc so that's 314 summoner just get those in there are Rogue is also an important one. And then we also have, like, the promoted monsters coming up. Like, uh, oh wait, this is a Great Knight. Which, I actually have to dive into the Great Knight class for a second, because I still want to change some things around uh, when it comes to the Great Knight class. Because I can't believe that the Great Knight has, like, six moves in normal FE8. It's garbage. Warrior. We're getting close to the end now. Let's break it. Pirates. Berserker. Is one that we still need to, you know, add to the list. Falcon Knight. Or Falco Knight is also one we need to add to the list. Uh, 4A is the next one. Cleric. Troubadour. Valkyrie. The window closed. Next to me. Dancer... Necromancer is actually a very important one. Technically, that's a promoted class as well. Fleet, Phantom, Rev, Entombed. Now we get to the promoted monster classes, so we should be done in any second now. White's one. 57 is white number two. Then we have the... Is the Tarvos coming up? Or oh, Elder Bale? We have 5A. Cyclops, did we not skip one? No. Gwigily. And then I think only the Death Goyle and the Tarvos, and then we're done. Or the Malduin. That's the name of the uh, of the boss. We skipped the Gwigily. It's gone. There we go. Added it back. I think Cerberus would be a way cooler name, though, because he has three heads. Might just be a way cooler name, in my opinion. Uh, let's see, 5F. Oh, wait, we still missed the Arch Mogul. I forgot about that. So, I think that's just one more. And then we're done. 61. Gorgon is technically not promoted. Is that the last one? Looks like it. Yeah, looks like it. That's the last one. Uh, 64. Right, so now, weapon icon. Uh, this one, there's no icon for this. Let me quickly import one. I have those uh, in a certain, or in a special file. Kind of, or like a special folder. Should be here somewhere. There you go. There you did. There it is. There it is. Look, we got him. DE boom now the minor sword is uh, fully 
fully functional in Fire Emblem 8, so yeah, we walk through the process of how to make an item with effectiveness. Nice. So that's also something I wanted to include. There we go. That is that. So now, what we want? What do we want to do now? Because there's a couple of things we can still do. But I think we're actually quite well underway when it comes to uh, making the chapter. I think we might just start distributing enemies. And just start doing uh, basic map things. So, what we'll do is we'll just start getting the enemy editor out. And I'll place... Oh, we have start event, of course. Uh, we're gonna place Igor at the throne. That's where I, a... Uh, boss belongs. It asks me if I want to install a patch. Sure thing. Can't hurt. If Effie Builder asks you if you want to install a patch, just do so. Because it gives you the opportunity, or it gives you, like, less trouble down the line. Uh, let's see. Let's just place you at the throne. We're going to edit the uh... We're going to edit the the things later anyway. So, Igor has the ability to use a Silver Lance. Okay, that's perfect. I'll make you a level 15 unit, but that doesn't really matter. Let's see, what are your stats like when you're level 15? You could use a little more speed. A little more defense. I'm fine with most of these stats, actually. You hit really hard. That's gonna be fun. Uh, we could use, like, a 1C. Get out the Javelin, so that he has a ranged option. Uh, and we'll just uh, let him drop a Master Seal, just for fun. I'm going to change this chapter into an infinite loop, by the way. So, now that we have, like, the chapter being set up, um, what I like to do is that we have the basic kind of, uh, we have the basic setup for the chapter here. We have a map. What you want to do now is you want to just look, okay, let's say I was playing Fire Emblem myself, but I was playing with a much larger army. And the, I, I, let's say I was playing Fire Emblem, but the roles were reversed. Where would I put my units? What's the strategic point to put my units in? What I'll do is I'll actually put one of these soldiers who are actually pretty weak. These guys are pretty weak. Uh, I'm going to give you guys... I'm going to make you guys like level 7 or something. Let's make you level 7... Let's actually make you guys a lot stronger by uh, installing some patches and stuff. That's a good thing to just do. Um, I'll edit most of this off screen, but what you could do in order to make enemies stronger is you just add 20% to their generic growths like this. So I'm going to change this to 70, changing this to 60 changing this to 52 that way they just get a bunch of extra stats like this and now it should have immediate effect so yeah th these soldiers look a lot more daunting already but that's not the only thing we can do we can also go to the generic enemy characters here while well, I'm not going to like randomly uh, or like edit the enemy growth too much because that adds a bunch of randomness what we could just do is we could just give all of the generic enemies uh, a level and everything, or like a plus one and everything. So that way they become a little bit more beefy. And right now, you'll see that these soldiers, they actually have a lot of, they, they start doing a lot more damage, which is exactly what we want. These fighters are going to be scary as hell though, just look at that. They deal 10 damage, they have eight speed. That's scary fighters, and even then, we can make the chapter even more daunting, like what we can also do, because there's a patch for that. Uh, let me open up the window. Uh, bonuses, I think it's called? Uh, oh, or like, penalty? Yeah, so, this one, right here, uh, you want to 
do this. The uh, easy no and normal mode level is the boldness, as the case for hard mode. Uh, easy normal mode level penalty into bo level bonus. You want to set this, so that way it's already fixed. But uh, oh, Shusuke, thanks Shusuke. Uh, that way enemies uh, get like whenever there's a penalty or a hard mode bonus, things become a little harder. Because otherwise the generic enemies are like very weak. And it should be in the chapter editor already. Which uh, is... Where? That's here? Here's the difficulty. Uh, let's just crank up the hard mode bonuses to like... Three extra levels. Yeah, we're gonna make the, the chapter a lot more difficult. The normal mode to... Give him one extra boost. There you go. Um, so that's that's fantastic. Uh, now the enemy units are a lot stronger. I feel like I may have actually already increased the generic growths for most enemies, so maybe I shouldn't refrain from doing that. Either way, uh, let's go back here to the enemy editor. And now I'm just sitting here. Okay, where would I put my enemy units? And that's just a matter of where do I think uh, they would fit uh, what I like to do is you have a choke point here what if you just uh, let's say we could put like I don't know let's say these fighters for an example let's change them to level 7 fighters let's put them in a little triangle formation I hate that these guys have uh, movement things going on Let's put them in a triangle formation. Um, let's just copy Pastor, you know, these guys. So, put one there and then give them different weapons. And do the same for this guy. We put them here and give this guy like a, a hand axe or something. And now what will happen is if you go to the choke point, you can easily uh, prevent these guys from catching up. Or like, you can block these guys coming in. They will be able to go over here as well. Um, I'm actually thinking this might be a little... These three guys might be a little too much enemy density. I might just put the hand axe guy here. Instead. Oh well, he cannot still attack the guy on the fort though. Hmm. Well, if you distract him with a unit from below, then that should be fine. Uh... Curious to see how that plays out, actually. We'll have to test that, of course. Uh, let's just put... I'm thinking of putting, like, a mercenary or something. Let's change you into a merc. Uh, I was thinking maybe we just put a mercenary, like, here, near the village. So, mercenary is out of the back of my head. Is that class F? Oh, look at that. Uh, we'll give him a steel sword, why not, and change it to level 7. Look at these stats! This guy's insane, I may have to actually hold back on making him too powerful. Uh, 5 is fine. Jesus Christ, that's... This guy has 11 speed, this guy's nuts. And... This guy will change you... Actually, it's just copy the mercenary. Let's make you a Myrmidon, who spawns here. Uh, we'll give you a uh, slim sword, sure. What's your stats like? Uh, we can crank that up to level 6. And we'll put you here. We'll make you move towards the enemy. Uh, this guy's stationary, right? No, he's not stationary. Uh, do not move. Make sure to check your AIs. Prioritize position. Reckless, that's a fun one. Uh, prioritize damage accuracy is one I like to set for the fighters. Let's set that for the fighters. Um, yeah. There are still, there's still a lack of enemies on the map, I feel like. We could add a little more. Let's actually just put soldiers on the bridges. Let's just put you here. Let's just put these guys on the bridges, that would be fun. Put him on the bridges. Right, you on the bridge. Uh, we definitely need more enemies in here. Uh, let's say... I'm thinking 15 is good. Like, 8 more. 
There's so many Igors on the map now. Uh, we could make uh, these uh, soldiers stationary, by the way, and just give them a lance. And let's say, uh, do not move, don't retreat. So that way, they'll just stay stationary on the map. You don't have to worry too much about them. We'll spot in brigands later to push the player forward. Uh, but let's say, do not move, don't retreat. Put you here. Let's say one C. Um, let's space you down here. Oh, I accidentally had Igor there. Right. So now all of the bridges... Or not all of the bridges. I like the idea of the enemy occupying the bridges. That feels like a solid plan. This one they don't need to occupy because that's already... Uh, that one's already uh, taken care of. Uh, let's uh, add a couple of archers. Because... Um, we have a Pegasus Knight. Or we're going to get a Pegasus Knight. I don't know really when I want to add the Pegasus Knight. Let's add uh, this last. Not a level 15 archer. Are you crazy? Uh, class dependence. Sure. Get rid of the Master Seal, by the way. That's uh, not very nice. Put you here. And let's say bow number 21. It's a silver axe, actually. They cannot use that. Uh, let's just say steel bow. Uh, let's not give you the boss AI. Do not attack only when adjacent. That's kind of stupid. So we have an archer here who is a little covered by terrain. Um, we could add an armor knight there. Because this looks a little bit like a choke point. Uh, this place here looks a bit like a choke point, doesn't it? So let's say E. Because that makes. Oh, wait. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, that's the armor knight. Uh, let's give you. Like a steel lance. And you have like four moves. One, two, three, four. You just have to watch out that you don't accidentally get in his range. Ooh, this is actually a very good opportunity. See, you can actually lure the Armor Knight onto the bridge because he has attack range on the bridge. You could lure him over there. That could be an interesting uh, interesting little thing to pull off in the chapter, that the Armor Knight goes towards the bridge. You can lure him over to the bridge. That could actually be a very cool uh, little mechanic right there. Uh, what I'll also do... And this is a little bit more niche. You don't have to do this. But I think that maybe it'd be funny if you just put, like, a cavalier right here. You give him, like, let's say just an, uh... Let's give him a sword. Let's get a sword cab in here and not make it too difficult immediately. Uh, let's give a steel sword cab. Um, reckless cab. Let's just try that out. Let's see, though. Um, calves tend to be very broken because of their sky-high defenses. I think this is a fine level 5 Cavalier. That's fine. And we'll set him to move towards enemy. But since he has these forests to get through, it will take a while before he gets there. That might be an interesting way to, th uh, to just fumble about with things. I don't want to make the map too full, actually. Because that might just screw a little with the whole uh, idea of it being a smaller map. I don't want to make it too claustrophobic. I think that maybe this fighter right here might already be pushing it a little too much. So let's just put him here. I don't want to get rid of him, but let's just put him there and let him just uh, wait there, I guess. Let's give him the do not move option. I think this is fine. I just overestimated a little bit. Uh, 13 enemies on the map. That's fine, including the boss. Uh, let's go over all of them. Move towards enemy. That's fine for you. Do not move. Do not move. These are the stationary guys on the bridge. Uh, I want you guys... You can actually start to push. That might be a lot more interesting. Uh, do not move. Do not move so that they just wait for you. This guy will come towards you. Uh, you will need this, though. 
And that's why it's important to just run past or run by all of the characters or all of the enemies on your map. Because if you don't have the correct AI set, some enemies will do stuff you just don't want them to do. Alright, so that is that. We have set this. Uh, so far for the enemy placement. I'm not really sure if I want to do more uh, enemy placement on camera. I'll probably do that off camera. Uh, what we could do though is get some reinforcements in with the help of like a ranged event. So what we'll do is we'll set a ranged event right here for when you enter a, a certain square. So let's go to the... There is already a ranged condition here anyway. That's that's dope. So ranged condition right here. Uh, let's change the ranged condition box to like... Uh, let's say... Right here, I guess? Mm, not really, let's just do this. So if you get on the fortress, you basically have found a blank spot, but uh, I want the player to only trigger reinforcements. Let's actually just do this. Yeah, so now the player will only trigger reinforcements if they're in that particular spot on the map. Maybe that may just be a little too small. Let's do this. And when that happens, the event will trigger. So make sure to beforehand set a temporary flag so that you can disable the event once it's been triggered. Uh, go to the event itself. Let's take a look inside. If a character, or this is not any player character, but if the main character stops in the range, uh... Temporary flag B will be turned off and that one temporary flag B is linked to this group of enemies spawning and They have temporary flag B set so when the event is triggered uh, The event will just play and what will happen is temporary flag B will be turned on again So that's how that works uh, After the events been triggered temporary flag B will be turned on again and it's important that you, in the start event, I think they disable a flag here, right? They set one... Yeah, they turn temporary. Make sure that if you do that rage event, to always turn the flag on. Then with the event you want to trigger the reinforcements with, turn it off. And then you want to use that uh, uh, flag once again to prevent the reinforcements from spawning again. It will automatically be completed, so... Perfect. We basically have that event set already. That was really fast because we literally already had a preset from the normal chapter one, which is uh, amazing. Thank you, game. Okay. All right, so that is that. Right now, what we'll do is we are just going to set a village. Um, this is uh, these are the houses. I haven't put any of the houses in the map, but we can just easily set a village. Uh, what we'll do is you have the seize point. That's a very important one as well. Let's set that real quick uh, We'll set that here seize point perfect uh, What we'll do and to make a village. It's pretty simple. You just go and set uh, This and then you said home I think it's just the normal home, right? How does the let's just take a little look at how chapter 2 does it uh, that's just a map event. It just does that event inside. It just... Ah, it's just literally the same setup. So what you just do is you just go to the event settings here. Go to... Where's my map objects? Here. Uh, that's the home. You set a completion flag. Uh, let's set flag C for an example. And let's put that, uh, of course, at the village itself. Let's say C. We have a conversation event here. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll say uh, give item to a visiting unit. We're going to give you a an elixir for this visit. 
it's just a simple example anyway. So now you get a uh, an elixir here. Cool. What we need to do is we'll also need to add because we want the brigands to push the player forward. We'll add a um, a target which wait there's oh visit village oh we needed to set it to the visit village of course that was a bit uh, foolish of me anyway they work the same way but there's just a difference in a flag being or like an, a tile change being triggered I think so village center thief target we need to set that as well with the Where's the... with the dummy event? It doesn't need an event, really. So, that's the target. Did I set it up correctly? Uh... Oh, no, you need... Yeah, you need to set the flag so that you cannot visit the village afterwards. Otherwise, that beats the entire purpose. So, let's see. Uh, this is... Visit village... Home... And we set this to D. Completion flag. Uh, set that to this village, and then we need to once again add another target so that the brigands go and uh, ravage the place if you don't hurry up. Set it to the middle of the village here. No, this is the middle of the village. There you go. Right, so now those two are set, but there's one problem. Um, there are no tile changes. If you visit the village, you want a tile change to occur. So what we'll do is we'll go to the map editor. This is the final step to creating that village. The uh, tile editor, or the map editor. And we'll go to expand tile changes. And we say, uh, yep, I want a new tile change to be set. We change this to the closed village gate. And what we'll do is we'll move this with the resize option to two and then two yep this one then we need to get another one in for the other village which is you can even take a look here if you look at the bottom of the screen you can see that it says coordinate x12 y10 so if you just remember those values you can just type those in and boom that makes life such a such a lot easier then we need to assign more tile changes for the uh, broken village, and we need to. Uh, this is X1. So what you'll do is you change to X1, but you also expand by two because we need a three by three square for the broken village. Uh, like this. There you go. And then we need another one, uh, which we once again need to resize. And this one has X11, Y8, so we put it there. There you go. Got him. So that's the tile changes done now. And once we fire up the ROM, it should work. I'm just trusting the game that it works. There might just be some bug fixing we'll still have to do. So for now, we have enemy placement. We have technically enemy reinforcements as well. We have um, a bunch of stuff already. The only thing we kind of still need to do, I see an error at the top right. The only stuff we need to do is a bunch of other things, which um, I might or might not record. Uh, I have to set armory and vendor. That's a very important one. I have to set a shop and an armory, which I haven't done before on video, so that could be interesting. Uh, and we still need to do some reinforcement shenanigans, um, and maybe some talk conversations, but I'll add the conversations myself off screen. Um, yeah, let's just get to the, uh, uh, armory vendor kind of shenanigans. So this is actually, uh, something new that I haven't done before. You just go over here and you say armory, shops armories. And then you get a list of all of the armories uh, in the game. What is interesting though is that you basically don't have the opportunity to add new armories for as far as I'm aware. Um, 
But you should be able to, like, move the armory from one place to another. So if we go to the protected, we have an armory here. Uh, what we'll do is we'll go to over here, and what we'll do is we'll go to the event. Where is the, that's the armory? So you just need to set a new one. It's been a while since I looked at these settings, by the way, and I've never changed the armories from vanilla before. So let's add two new ones, and let's say shop armory. You can add a secret shop too if you want. Um, oh, you can you can actually allocate a new one. Why not just do that then? Space has been allocated for the armory, and what you just say. Where's the... Where's the new space, then? This is strange. Where's the new... Uh, where's the new space? Hmm. This is strange. It said that item sold was changed. Is this a different address? Yes, it is. It's a different address. Okay. I don't know what's going on, but we can just edit this. Uh, so I... Oh, wait, it has actually added a new one. Okay, because these values are new here. So, uh, let's just put in, like, say, 40 items. No, I want to add 40. I forgot that the uh, Fire Emblem armories kept out at, like, 20 items. I cannot add more. You literally cannot add any more. 20 is the max, so we have to do with that. Um, I'm gonna remove the iron blade from the list. I'm not going to sell any blades. Uh, let's just say... Iron Lance. Slim Lance. Steel Lance. And then Silver Lance, I guess. And then add... Javelin to the list as well. And then we're going to the axes, which is Iron Axe, uh, Steel Axe, Silver Axe, and then we want the Hand Axe. Where's the Hand Axe at? Uh, right here. Oh, and let's just for fun just add a hammer. We don't have many slots. Oh, we have plenty slots for the bows. Let's add a hammer to the shop. We're Fire Emblem Shadow Dragoning this uh, armory right here, where you can just buy random ass hammers at a lot of shops. Iron bow. We add steel bow. I've actually realized now that I haven't added any. Uh, I haven't actually added any, what's it called, magic units to the ROM. I might just add that as a secret character, a magic, secret magic character later down the line. And let's just add for fun, let's say you can buy infinite rapiers, and that you can buy, what's another fun weapon? Not a sham shear. That's a little too much. Hmm, that's a fun item. That's cool to add to the armory. Mm -mm -mm. Gems, that would be funny. You buy gems, you sell them. Actually, gems would be, that would be a waste of money if you decide to, ooh, battle axe, just add a battle axe. Would be a waste if you decided to buy uh, gems and then sell them because the buying price for gems would be twice as high as the price you sell them for because that's just how money works. This is the sh this is the armory with a bunch of cool items, and then we also need to set a shop, which is also important. Allocate new, create new shop data, and we'll just say. Uh, normally a shop sells vulneraries, 
Uh, let's also sell elixirs. Let's add a bunch of space here. Uh, let's say 15 items. Um, let's... What else is there that we want to sell? Pure water. Um, Antitoxin. That's not stuff we want to sell. Um, the staves are like... Here they are. Uh, let's say heal. For C is amend. For D, is that a recovered? Yeah, let's add recover to the mix. Um, physic? Sure, why not? And let's just add some tomes, like 34, somewhere around this. We have fire. Let's add a thunder. 3A, Hellfire, sure, why not? 3B, what's 3B? Oh, Pulsing. And a Vimble Fetter, because why not? And yeah, that's just, that's just the, the shop. Let's see, we have 11 items. So that is how we add a new shop. Uh, we should just set this to a vendor. The reason why you want to set the different vendors and shit is because if you do not set the correct type, the ROM will not uh, display the correct, like, portrait. Because the vendor, that's always the nice lady that sells you stuff. Uh, the guy with a mustache is the one in the armory. And Anna is, of course, the one in the secret shop. So you want to set the correct shop with that. So that is that. That's everything set right now. Um, is there anything else I wanted to do? I don't actually think so. So, that is actually everything here right now. The only thing that we kind of still want to do is fix the start event. And after that, we'll just uh, see if we can edit some more... Uh, yeah, if we can edit the... Uh, edit little things that I'm going to just edit off screen. So, let's just do the... Uh, start event here, and if anything else interesting appears, we'll do that later. So first of all, Tension is the background music, which is a good song. I might just import some more songs later down the line. But... The enemies are just being standardly loaded. Um, I think I'm actually just going to do... Uh, the character... I do not want to highlight that I just think I just want to highlight the Igor on the throne here um, I'm not going to change any of the text uh, I'll remove this uh, erase unit at coordinates that's all kind of boring uh, we could might as well just use the character command here uh, let's get Igor out of here be gone Let's not edit the text, move character, no, let's not do that, uh, battle quotes flag, uh, let's remove this because this is all that, uh, battle setup, we don't need that, um, let's keep this, tutorial, let's get the ri get rid of that, uh, let's stop moving these characters, we don't need the characters to move, let's remove that, Unit is highlighted. I don't care. Oh, uh, let's just leave that in. And then we have to load units and move. Uh, get this out of here. Keep this flag, though. That's important. We have a bunch of uh, conversation shenanigans here. Uh, I thought it would be interesting if we instead moved in from the bottom here. Uh, Sir Land right here. Let's... Uh, Puts their land here. Uh, let's actually change the levels of the... Why do my units not grow? That's interesting. I want my units to grow. Let's say change uh, Tim to level 5 Lord. What would his stats be like if he was level 5? So... He had like 19 HP. Let's see. Six strength. Goes up by two. 
10 skill. Let's add, uh... Oh, that's... Let's increase stats a little bit more liberally, because this is an average set of levels. 12 speed. Let's do 13. How much defense would he have? 4. Let's add 2 of that. Uh, his resistance would go... Let's increase his resistance by 3, and luck by 2 or something. These are his new stats. Um, that's out of leveling characters. Uh, let's move this down. Let's give him a steel sword as extra weapon. Good. Uh, da, da, da. Also, let's uh, give the player some gold to start the chapter with. Uh, give gold. Uh, give gold. Let's say like 5,000 should be enough. Right. Insert that. And let's add a bunch of extra characters to the party, right here, so we just add characters to the party. Uh, we'll add... We have... Do we still have... We have Kirina. I wanted to add Kirina to the party. Uh, Where's the cleric loss? Should be somewhere here. There it is. Uh, and let's. Kirina is a level 5 unit. I'll edit the stats later. Uh, 3C. No, it's 4C then. That's mend. Yield, mend, vulnerary. Uh, let's insert and put you. Oh, wait, let's put you over there. And. Do you move there? Yeah. And let's add Edlinda as well to the mix. Uh, 47 was Pegasus Nut, right? No, let's recruit. Just one off. At Edlinda there. Yeah, correct. That's good. Uh, let's give you like a Iron Lance. Uh, Javelin. And a vulnerary, and we'll add your or edit your stats later down the line. It's fine. So those characters appear there. Um, I'm going to just take her a little bit with stuff here and there. Um, um, yeah, that's just what what the plan is right now. Uh, just tinkering a little with stats, and yeah, I think we've gotten a lot of stuff. I'll just probably test a little bit off screen, and. It's going to be just that, me editing off screen a little bit. If anything happens, I'll include it in the video. If not, uh, you'll see the end result soon enough. So, um, yeah, see you in a minute, because uh, we're not done yet, but the chances that something interesting appears uh, are lower now. So, see you in a bit. Okay, so this is kind of funny. Uh, I did discover something crazy. Uh, you can see here with Simon, Look at this guy's stats! So if we attack this guy now with a Miner Sword... Crazy shit's about to unfold. Watch this, he's gonna die. Oh no, this weapon is absolutely insane. Look at this. The amount of numbers right here, his stats are so high that it literally causes some kind of overflow glitch. So. That's at least funny. Uh, that's a bug I encountered whilst playtesting. For the rest, there's nothing else interesting going on, so... Uh, yeah, that's that. Alright, it has taken a while, but I think I'm finally done with the game, or with the hack. Uh, the only things I kind of edited, nothing major really. I just added a bunch of music, a bunch of pillets, it's just all... Uh, a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, detailed work that isn't that interesting to dive into. I did, however, stumble upon one thing, and that is the tile changes. Make sure that for the tile changes, the destroyed village comes before the gate, because the uh, standard village event will prioritize the uh, later tile change for some reason, so if you set the destroyed village later than the gate that closes, what happens is 
the village will be destroyed if you visit it yourself, which is probably not what you want unless you're literally playing as a bunch of brigands. Uh, so that is what I did. I added some music. Uh, we can sort of fire up the ROM and see what it looks like. I also tweaked enemy stats a little bit. Um, I did play around, so my characters are higher level. But right now, Igor's like, oh, good job, everyone. And then uh, uh, we have a bunch of standard text. I really did as little text as possible. Nothing big, because I uh, was uh, kind of not in the mood to rush. Or was in the mood to rush, actually. So there's just a bunch of uh, normal stuff here, just the usual. And if you just go and like attack this guy, you've com uh, custom combat music playing. We have a custom battle screen going on, some custom palettes, it's all very standard little tweaks. Uh, to help you all with a little strategy, I like to sensor land or sensor land uh, up here. And uh, yeah, that, that's really it. Nothing special, nothing that special. I will say though, what I won't reveal is uh, a bunch of extra characters that will join the map later. Uh, you'll have to figure that out for yourselves. There is uh, a hidden event right here. Or like hidden characters, hidden funniness in the villages here. Uh, so be sure to check those out. And there's a secret event right here in the ruins. So uh, make sure to check that out as well. Um, and yeah, that's it. If you complete the chapter, it loops in on itself. But this was just a little test to sort of give you an idea of how you make uh, an all-in-one chapter uh, for the starting event I can show that it's really basic what I did is just load the enemies move the camera to the character with this highlight the character let them talk did the same thing uh, thing for Tim here also gave him a little bit of gold uh, that's really everything it's just a short recap uh, just a video to show you how you make a tutorial, a bit of an all-in-one video, how do you make a chapter. And, uh, yeah, I hope this is what you all asked for. Thank you all so much for watching anyway. Uh, my name is Binix Begins, and I'll thank you for watching this tutorial. Leave a vote on the next poll on what you want the next tutorial to be about. Make sure to like this video if you haven't, and make sure to subscribe, that shows your support. We're really close to one million, so I would really appreciate if you all subscribed. Uh, make sure to leave a comment for the algorithm and uh, also check out this little hack because I'm going to publish this one chapter long hack eventually. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys all next time in the next FE Builder tutorial. Goodbye.